Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of FCOD Gaming. I am your host, Alex, and this is the Hard Crafting Mod Spotlight. Um, I realize I this might be a little bit overkill just because I, I am doing a Let's Play on it, but I was actually asked by the developer of this mod to uh, do a quick little spotlight video, so uh, here we are. And I really do enjoy this mod, so I'm, I'm willing to give it as much publicity as I, uh, as I can. So, uh, yeah, this is iron production. <laughs> Looks quite a bit different than the vanilla game. Um, and there's actually three tiers of iron production uh, in this mod. And uh, <clears throat> I've got all three of them set up, basically. But, uh, yeah, if you're not familiar with this game, uh, I am going to link to the uh, mod in the description, obviously. But uh, basically, this adds new crafting recipes as far as iron and copper go. Um, there is uh, modified recipes for the logistics and um, construction robots as well, but that is not the default anymore. Uh, but you can turn that in in the uh, <clears throat> in the LUA file or yeah, whatever. But uh, yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and walk. And I'll just kind of walk you guys through. Um, the different tiers. Now, tier one is what you start out with, and I've still got it set up from when I first started the game. I had to move the mine because I ran out of materials. But uh, yeah, basically, and let me clear this out a little bit. Basically, what we have is a mine, a box, an inserter, and a furnace. Now, the uh, with this mod, when you mine iron ore. Instead of just making iron ore, it makes three other products as well. It makes iron nuggets, uh, dirt, and gravel. Now, dirt and gravel uh, can be used for certain things, but for the most part, um, especially dirt, is kind of a waste product. Uh, you can use it to build roads that actually slow down your vehicles, which is kind of useful when you're coming into base and stuff like that. Uh, gravel, I believe you can... No. I was thinking maybe you could use that as well, but I don't think you can. Um, but yeah, so when you smelt iron nuggets, uh, that's a one-for-one, one, uh, kind of like how the ore was uh, in the vanilla game. Uh, when you smelt iron ore, it actually turns... Uh, you, you have to smelt two at a time, and that turns into one iron plate and one iron slag. Now, when you're at this level... Iron slag might seem like a waste resource, but you want to keep a hold of that because once you unlock the uh, other tiers, uh, it is actually quite useful. Um, and by that I mean you can actually use it to make iron plates. It's just not something that you have by default. So, this is kind of a slow process, uh, especially with the iron ore. So usually I'll, when I'm starting out, I will set up one or two extra uh, iron mines just for that reason. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, once you get into uh, producing things and researching things, uh, if you go into your research screen, I believe it is when you research Crusher, that's when it unlocks uh, different types of metal processing as well as the uh, copper processing, which I'll get into in a second here. But, uh, but yeah, basically, uh, that's your Tier 2 uh, metal processing, which I can demonstrate up here. So this is Tier 3, so we're not going to deal with that right now. I'm going to fill this full of coal, though, just so that it doesn't keep bugging me. Now, for simplicity's sake, um, I've just set up one of each factory. Uh, so it's not balanced to the point where it would be most efficient. But this way you can kind of see the flow of materials and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of simpler, or more simple to to look at. Um, I ob obviously also don't have coal going to these furnaces. Uh, you can easily set this, set this up with electric furnaces or just add a coal line in here somehow. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I decided just to manually fill it up, which isn't too bad. 
so anyway, um, I've got these two electric mines, uh, which are producing your ore, your dirt, your gravel, and occasionally your iron nuggets. Iron nuggets are kind of rare uh, with those, but it's fine. Um, and so along this belt, I've got different smart inserters uh, that are sorting out the various resources. So these four, well, three um, inserters and boxes are sorting out the dirt and the gravel. The reason I have three of them is because when this thing gets going, if it picks up a ton of ore at the same time, uh, you can easily have stuff slip by here. And if it doesn't have ore to pick up, it's going to clog up your system. Um, so I have that stuff going to a box, and then I have the gravel going onto this belt, uh, which gets fed into a, a assembling machine that's making a pile of gravel, uh, because at this point, gravel is kind of a waste product. It's not being really used for material processing. Uh, so pile of gravel takes two gravel, so that kind of clears up some inventory space. And then furthermore, you can smelt that into, well, it's not happening right now, but you can smelt that into stone bricks and then I've decided to make the stone bricks into walls, even though I have this map set on peaceful, so I don't really need walls. Anyway, so that's getting rid of the waste products. Uh, so the actual useful products, the iron nugget, uh, for starters, gets pulled off of the input belt, gets sent over to this smelter, and like I said, that's a one for one. So. You put one iron nugget in, you get one iron plate out. And actually, I'm going to start some research here. Um, I don't really care what it is. I just want it to be kind of expensive. <laughs> just for the... Uh, just to kind of keep the production line going. Uh, let's do lab efficiency. Because I've pretty much researched everything I need to uh, show you guys what's going on. So, the iron ore... Uh, goes into the Crusher Machine, uh, which is a new resource just for this mod. This mod. It has a couple different uses. Um, in this case, it's turning 10 iron ore into uh, three different byproducts. It, it'll turn it into stone, uh, crushed iron, which you can see there, and then uh, iron nuggets. Again, iron nuggets, one-to-one -one smelting ratio, so they get put on the same belt as the iron nuggets from the sorting belt. Stone, again, is at this point, it's kind of a waste resource. You can use it, obviously, like you would stone in any other situation. Uh, but for right now, I'm just putting it up in a box because um, I don't really have a use for it. <clears throat> uh, in my playthrough, I actually have this and the piles of gravel both getting smelted into stone blocks and then turn into the walls. And I've got a ton of walls, uh, let me tell you. But uh, yeah, so anyway, that makes crushed iron, which this smart inserter is turning, or moving to this furnace, which uh, crushed iron will turn into iron plates and slag, which the slag is getting turned, taken immediately to this other crusher over here. Uh, once you have five slag, it goes through the crusher, and it will get turned into gravel and um, a less amount of crushed iron, which goes back into this furnace and then set out on this belt. So it kind of seems, just looking at it, uh, that it's kind of a perpetual resource, but it's, it's really not. It's just kind of turning just kind of taking every little bit of that crushed iron out that it can. And, uh, yeah, if you actually look at the numbers, it does run out of deficit, so, yeah. But that's pretty much that uh, production line. So you have gravel being taken in here uh, as a waste resource. You have dirt as a waste resource and you have stone as a waste resource. And these two crushers 
or a system of these two types of pressures are going to feed your smelters. And uh, yeah, it works. So, uh, and then you have your iron uh, nugget production, which is also going to feed that smelter. Let me just grab some iron off the line because I, I just want to see, have you guys see this in action. I'm actually, going to do that. It doesn't take much to run into deficit with this setup just because, like I said, I have one of every type of machine. Um, once you if you're building your own factory, obviously you're going to want a much larger setup. But, uh, yeah, figuring that out is part of the fun, <laughs> as far as what ratios you need and stuff like that. So, Anyway, on to Tier 3. So with Tier 3, uh, that gets unlocked once you have... Let's go to the research screen. Once you have the pulverizer unlocked, uh, that does require the crusher, obviously, and then uh, steel processing and advanced material processing. Um, oh, and to craft these uh, crushers, take 15 stone, 12 uh, iron, and 3 copper all together. And you can kind of see uh, the different elements there. Pulverizers, take 20 stone, 35 iron, 7.5 copper, and 10 steel, which is kind of expensive, but uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely worth it. So it's a kind of a similar production chain. Obviously, you still have all the same products being made. Um, here, I'm sorting out dirt and gravel, and uh, at this point, gravel is not a waste resource because it gets used further down the line, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, dirt is less of a waste resource, but you still make a lot more of it than you actually uh, use. Um, the developer of the mod has said in the forums that he's looking at balancing that just so that you don't have piles and piles of dirt laying around. But, uh, but yeah, at this point you make a ton more dirt than you actually use. But anyway, um, so that stuff gets sorted out. The iron nuggets get sorted out once again one-to-one, -one, so they get their own little uh, smelting operation here, and then on their own separate belt. And then once again, uh, we have the crusher taking iron ore and turning it into stone, iron nugget, and crushed iron. So, again, crushed nugget, or not crushed nugget, nugget goes on to its own smelting operation. Uh, stone gets put into this box, which I'll explain what's going on there in a second. And then crushed iron gets turned to the pulverizer. And the pulverizer takes crushed iron and gravel and turns it into uh, pulverized iron, an iron nugget, and iron slag. Now pulverized iron also is a one-to-one -one ratio. So between that and your iron nugget, you could put those on the same on the same uh, belt, but in this instance, just to kind of sort things out, I have the pulverized iron going into its own furnace, and the nugget going back down to where all the all the rest of the nuggets are getting uh, processed. So this takes, um, or this produces slag. So this slag gets put in its own crusher. Uh, the crusher then creates um, the crushed iron and gravel and that's that gets put back into this pulverizer and it doesn't produce enough gravel to keep it running on its own and that's why I have this diverted to um, well the gravel off of the line is diverted to going into here and kind of filling that up making sure that it's full but even with the slag processing gravel and the input belts gravel, it's not quite enough. So what you can also do with a pulverizer is turn dirt and stone into gravel. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. You have your dirt separated off. 
and you have your stone that's being made from the crushed iron. Put them together, and uh, this machine turns it into gravel. And I have it set up so that it's going to take off of the uh, <clears throat> the input belt first, and then anything else that it's lacking is going to be made out of this machine. And actually, the way that the inserters work, it's taking the gravel from the slag processing first as well. Well, maybe not first, but it doesn't produce enough to keep up with this belt. So um, Now you do end up with excess dirt and excess stone. So this dirt is a waste product. This stone is kind of a waste product, but I'm turning it into stone bricks here. And you can turn that into walls, whatever. So, that's tier three. Pretty, it, it, it does get kind of complicated, I will say that. But, um, it's doable. And obviously when you expand this to a, uh, a larger operation, it gets rather complicated, which is kind of the situation that I'm dealing with currently in my playthrough. But, uh, we actually have a nugget on the belt, and that just bothers me. Um, also, I mentioned uh, with this process that uh, you end up with slag that you should hold on to. Once you get your tier 2 set up, oh, and I'm running out of fuel all over the place, um, you can, this slag machine is actually not used 100%, so you can just kind of dump it in there. And uh, most of the time I'll set up a box with an inserter, and it'll just kind of take that when it's got downtime, and eventually it'll catch back up. So, that is iron processing. Another thing that this mod introduces is uh, the incinerator. Now, I, I think I've seen other mods with the incinerator, um, but this one is very useful because it's a good way to get rid of your dirt. Uh, so I have basically just a bunch of boxes with dirt in them set up on a line and then um, incinerators burning the dirt into nothing. And for this I did bring a coal line just because it was really easy and it takes a lot of energy to do this. You can see that coal is going down really, really fast. And there's also an electric uh, variant which... Uh, takes does take a decent amount of electricity too, so just keep that in mind when you're setting these up. Uh, if you run this mod with other mods, um, I forget which mod it has that has the uh, landfill in it, but if you run that, uh, you can dirt, use dirt to make a landfill, and it's makes it a little bit more efficient. But uh, but yeah, the mod as is really the best way to get rid of the dirt is to use the incinerators. You can also use that for excess gravel and stone and stuff like that. Uh, pretty much the incinerator will burn anything that you put into it. So, we are going to go down to our copper. Because uh, that pretty much covers iron. So, uh, with copper, your tier 1, which I'm actually out of resources here. Um probably should have checked that beforehand. Uh, but anyway, your copper mines produce dirt, gravel, uh, copper sludge, and copper ore. So your tier one, I've got it set up kind of like I do the iron. Um, and your uh, stone furnaces are going to produce uh, one copper plate and two copper sludge for every three copper ore that is put into it. So you end up with a lot of copper sludge uh, kicking around when everything's said and done. But, again, you want to hold on to it because it's useful just like that iron sludge is. Uh, so I'm going to grab that and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Also, as you can see, leftover dirt and gravel. So, uh, tier two is fairly straightforward. Um, again, I have the same sort of uh, sorting type deal 
with the dirt and gravel. And the uh, dirt just stays in the box. Gravel, again, goes through a gravel factory, get, again made into stone bricks. Blah, blah, blah. Um, now the uh, copper sludge that you make from the input belt and from smelting gets directed into this crusher. Now the crusher takes two copper sludge and creates uh, gravel and uh, crushed copper, or copper dust is what it's called. And let's see if I can find the recipe for that. Yeah, sludge processing uh, makes one to one for that. So, again, the gravel's getting diverted into this factory, making stone bricks. Uh, the copper dust is a one for one smelting. So that gets put into this furnace. One of those produces one copper plate. Awesome. Uh, tier 3, which is down here, is quite a bit more complicated, and I actually have it paused right now, uh, just to... just because I was making way too much copper, because I'm not even doing Tier 3 science yet. Um, but anyway, you have your input here, and we are taking the sludge off of the belt, we're also separating the copper and the gravel uh, that comes off, and obviously we're just taking the dirt off there. Um, and I suppose you don't necessarily have to separate the ore and the gravel, but I, at least in my experience, um, everything kind of runs smoothly because, or a little bit more smoothly because you don't have instances where everything is filled with copper ore and it can't get to gravel and vice versa. Um, but anyway, uh, we have the same sort of uh, copper sludge processing. So that gets turned into gravel, which gets put back on the belt. So that it can get used a little bit further down the line. And uh, we have our copper dust, which actually gets put into uh, the same copper dust that gets produced a little bit down the line. I'll explain that here, well, right now. Uh, basically, with Tier 3, you take your pulverizer, and you take copper ore and gravel, and it turns that into your copper dust and sulfur. Now, it produces uh, four copper dust and two sulfur. That gets directed into this factory, which takes those two ingredients and turns them into uh, copper sulfate. Now, with that, that takes nine copper dust and five sulfur dust, which you'll notice is a slightly different ratio. So you actually end up with more copper dust than sulfur dust, and that's why I have this um, this furnace at the end of the line, just to kind of catch anything that isn't used by this factory. And that works fine um, until your copper belt fills up and then you're kind of... things don't balance out quite right and yeah, you're kind of in a bad spot. Um, in my playthrough, I actually use uh, smart inserters paired with smart boxes uh, to kind of set up a conditional thing of grabbing uh, the copper dust. But anyway, that's something you can figure out on your own, which, like I said, is part of the fun. So anyway, uh, the copper sulfate gets fed into this chemical plant, which takes the copper sulfate and water and turns it into copper plates, gravel, and sulfuric acid. So... Um, with that, I actually have it set up so that the gravel go, gets cycled back around into uh, being used with the copper dust and sulfur. Then the copper plate obviously gets fed into the, into the main line. 
uh, your sulfuric acid, again, uh, just gets used like normal sulfuric acid. So once you get your oil industry up, uh, you can feed this into your where your sulfuric acid is, and it just kind of helps supplement that. Um, it's not really enough to be used by itself. I've had this factory up for quite a long time, and the tank only has 133 units of sulfur, sulfuric acid in it. So really, it's not enough to sustain by itself, but it can be used to kind of offset some of your cost. Um, another recipe that I'm not showing off here is uh, you can turn that sulfur dust into sulfur directly, which it's a little bit less efficient uh, as far as your copper production goes, but if you need sulfur for whatever re reason, um, it's a good way to do it. So that is pretty much the production chains. I'm not going to get into the robotic production chains just because it's not enabled by default. Um, but it introduces a couple new ingredients for the uh, robots and stuff like that. So, of course it's turning nighttime for when I want to show off the road system, but, uh, oh, just in time. My uh, second tier factory is out of ore. Also, my coal is running out. It's no good. Anyway, up here, and I'm, I'm, I might buy a little bit of time until the sun gets up, just so that you guys can see what's going on. Um, we have two different types of roads here. We have the dirt road, and you have concrete. Now, what concrete does? Oh, I didn't. I can actually take you guys down to that factory. Um, the concrete actually in, increases your walking and driving speed, and the recipe for that is five stone brick, one iron ore, and ten water. Now, obviously, I don't have this set up to feed automatically, but you could easily do that. Um, and then that leaves you with concrete, which gets put down four, in a four by four square and is kind of iffy when you place it down, but I don't think that that's the mod's fault. I think that's Factorio's fault, just how, with how it deals with uh, ground textures. But as you can see, just goes down like that, and the, the dirt gets plopped down at the same same rate. Um, so, concrete, um, your walking and driving speed goes up to 140%, which is a pretty decent increase. So if you want... Like if you have different outposts or uh, whatever, or you just want to get around your main factory a little bit faster, you can put these down and it will help you do that. Um, on the other side of that, you have uh, your dirt road, which actually slows you down. Um, so I'm going to show these off a little bit. And here. First off, this is your normal speed, obviously. We're right next to a biter nest, but I have this on peaceful. This goes a little bit faster. I'm going to actually go a little bit more up here. So as you can see, you're going a little bit faster there. And then once you hit dirt, you slow down. And if you're in a vehicle and you don't have the accelerator pushed, you pretty much stop immediately, which can be pretty useful if you... Uh, so let's say you have this concrete as a road, and then you get to your base. You can stop pretty much immediately, and then you don't blow up your car or um, hurt your factory, stuff like that. So... That pretty much covers the different textures there. And I think that is it. So this is a pretty good mod. Um, has a couple balancing issues, mostly with the dirt, just because there's not a lot of use for it, and you make a lot of it. But, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty content to just have it 
be burned by incinerators. And uh, yeah, so like I said, pretty good mod, pretty well thought out. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend that you guys go and check it out for yourselves. Uh, so if you want to see a little bit more in-depth um, of what this mod is capable of, I'm going to link to the playlist of my playthrough. Um, and uh, I'm also going to link to the mod itself in the description. So if you uh, like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more mod spotlights like this, uh, hit that subscribe button. And uh, yeah, as always, remember to take care of yourselves out there. And thanks for watching.